Shinra and their vision for the future of game technology and game design. And, um, and then I'm going to uh, speak um, with uh, him for a few minutes uh, about uh, his illustrious career in games. And then we're gonna open it up uh, for Q&A. Um, so we're very excited. Please join me in welcoming Yoichi Wada. Thank you very much for coming. There are three elements needed to deliver great game experiences. Technology, business model, and game design. Bright and talented students like you may think that game design is the most important element. But in fact, Game design is built on top of sound technologies and business models. To put it uh, the other way around, if you can effectively utilize technology and the business model, it's possible to make dramatic leaps in game design. Today, I'd like to share how cloud gaming, a technological breakthrough, brings innovation to game design and how it could trigger amazing games to be created and delivered to the world. Let me start by taking you back to technological elements that seemed trivial, but had major Im impact on game designs to follow. For instance, Nintendo's game controller was a significant invention. Before Nintendo, each arcade machine had a separate user interface. But Nintendo came up with a versatile controller that allowed us to play any game. Especially prominent was the cross key pad. Representative titles from this period include games like Super Mario Brothers with a horizontal scro uh, scroll platform. As you can see, this game design is most suitable for the cross, uh, close keypad and the control buttons. RPG was a popular genre in the pre dawn era of the Japanese game industry. With arcade games, you couldn't dominate the machine to keep playing. But with Nintendo, you could save data on long cartridges. Game creators at that time recognized this, and uh, as a result, long adventure sagas became a sensation. This was the starting point for games to follow a more narrative course. The media was replaced to optical discs from uh, PlayStation and beyond. Disc space increased dramatically and allowed huge volumes of 3D drawing technology. <coughs> Video and music to be incorporated into games. Since then, games have become more, more, uh, more form of entertainment, like movies. When you hear the word technology, you may get the impression that it is some magical mathematical spell that solves everything. But that's not correct. A truly innovation, an innovative technology, does not give you the answers you are looking for right away. But it also doesn't stipulate and limit the future. It merely sets the direction for the future. Those who have detected the uh, streak used their in, uh, ingenuity to try out new game designs and the business models, from which come the groundbreaking gaming experiences that lead and expand the market. We have established Shinra technologies. We, have, we are conf confident that we can change the game with cloud gaming. Here, we have compiled the game uh, market size on each game 
device capable of playing games from 1975 to the production of 2020. Until now, the game market grew through each expansion of the devices capable of playing games and the ecosystem established for each device. Going forward, Cloud will start to take initiative to lead the industry, which means the device classifications mentioned in this chart will become meaningless. Let me explain briefly about Cloud Gaming. The game consoles that we all own shift to the data center. Calculations are all done on the cloud. So client benefits from being able to use any device. This is indeed groundbreaking. However, this alone is only an improved convenience in game distribution. Simply shifting each game machine to the data center doesn't help to improve functionality. And uh, from the perspective of the data center, working with each machine separately would be incredibly inefficient. Our focus at Shinra is inside the data center. We made a supercomputer on the cloud. Individual players could never invest on such a high-spec machine. However, if we recoup funds according to how much users use our service, it will be a very economical solution for the players. On the cloud, we have a separation of game logic GPU from game re uh, rendering. We established our venture based on this patented technology. Applying this technology offers more flexibility in data set design and allows us to focus on unique game properties, such as setting up a separate server dedicated to physical computing. The game market expanded because we are able to play games on devices other than game machines. On the other hand, as game specific, uh, specific consoles faded away. I feel that technology began to stall. Shinra's cloud gaming system is our attempt to rebuild a machine dedicated to games. So, how can cloud gaming change games? I hope what I'm about to share will set the stage for you to think in depth about the, this topic. In my opinion, I see three main changes. One, game development will change. Two, the player's relationship to the computer Finally, the player's in interaction with this uh, with the game will change. The eyes of the world are all on technologies like procedural techniques and AI. Although not unique to the cloud, having the power of the supercomputer in the data center rather than on the client side takes things to a completely new dimension. We also can't ignore the potential of mounting unlimited memory on the servers. You will realize that what was called open world was in fact not a true open world. Furthermore, I can picture an evolved version of MOBS through sharing a development environment Let's look a little further into online games. We focused on the benefit of having all data processed within the data center. Until now, developing online games has been a huge challenge.
even before you get your hands on game design, incredible amounts of time and energy are spent to devise the device method against the cheating. In addition, shifting between clients is technically very challenging. The language between clients and server is different. So it's not easy to train engineers to have mastery in both. However, if game processing takes place so solely in the data center, we will not have to think about those obstacles anymore. That means you could develop online games without having the specific knowledge and ability to uh, create this type of game. This shift would allow online game design to be dramatically richer and more diverse. The second change, the player's relationship to the computer, derived from having a supercomputer in the cloud. It's critical for supercomputers to have massive processing power, but more important is to having it running around the clock one of the users, like myself, may not be accessing the data center right now, but there is always someone else who connects to the computer. Any data from the network can be linked to the supercomputer. This update continues for 24 hours a day, and the world inside the computer changes constantly. Computer games were originally single play experiences, and they were merely toys. As network connections led to the rise of multiplayer games where you play against other players, computer became a medium to connect player to player. However, in cloud gaming, Computers have the potential to exist an active and living environment. Computers are no longer toys dealing with one player at a time. They will become a world that grave on its own, similar to the real world we live in. And seeing this evolve will be a completely fresh and intense experience. Going on my third idea, I'd like to dwell into the point that we could play games on a variety of devices. <coughs> the end time anywhere you reach the security is already widely indicated. So I will not go into it today. Instead, I'd like to think along the lines of can you play the game at any time, place, or occasion? Players have multiple facets when interacting with game uh, with a game. Digging into this subject will lead to discovering new gaming experiences. I will use Shogi as an example to think about this. Shogi is a Japanese board game similar to Western chess. Like chess, Shogi is a game for but you can also have fun watching other play, others play. Instead of rem remaining, uh, remaining quiet, an observer may occasionally interrupt and advise how to make the next move. Of course, a serious shogi match wouldn't allow this, but for entertainment, the chaos can also be part of the fun. We also have play-by-plays. Two professionals play a shogi match, while a different set of professionals comment on each move using a bigger version of the shogi board for the viewers. The commentators perform live simulations, like if he made the move here instead, he could have had the big 
the advantages and so on and so forth. So we learn as often by family books and the score sheets by famous players. These are records of past ma uh, matches and the abstractions of famous players where you can take and imitate the moves of someone you like. If a computer applies and uh, processes all of this data, we could play a game by Ghost that has similar styles and habits as a famous player. In Japan, we also have many shogi clubs. They give you titles and ranks, and people keep coming back to get better. These clubs are good things. My third point could be a very extensive thing if you consider game design as part of service design and business model. Cloud gaming is not merely an invention, uh, uh, innovation of how to distribute games. It has the potential to change games fundamentally. Times of significant changes translate to great opportunities for all of us. With new ideas, we can create new genres. This is not about being the best in the world in an existing, existing genre. This is a rare opportunity to actually invent a completely original genre. I hope today's lecture would stimulate you to break new grounds in the game industry. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of you join us in this exciting endeavor. differentiate the uh, calculation and rendering
あるゲームをやっていてもっとある要素について協力にしたいということはいくらでも思いはしていますでもそれより僕らが興味があったのは今まで見たことないある今あるもののエンハンスではなくて全く違うゲーム体験が提供できるかどうかっていうのはすごく気になっていますそう、so、it is possible to enhance the existing game but we are interested in、uh, Uh, seeing something completely new, something that didn't exist before. So,、um, what's an example of something completely new? You talked about new genres. How,、uh, why should I, as a player,、uh, be excited、uh, about this possible future for games? Shinra is a new company.、Um, it's kind of a spin off of Square Enix. Is, it, is there a relationship there? Are you, are you guys a subsidiary?、Uh, so we are, currently, we are the subsidiary of the、uh, Square Enix 100%. Various developers, so it's not, it won't be just with the Square Enix, but with the other developers that we are looking forward to working with. And、um, your Shinra is going to be、uh, headquartered here in New York City, right? Now, currently, you're sharing、uh, office space with Avalanche, the studio, right? So I have to ask you Shinra, Avalanche, Cloud, is there some kind of pattern here? Is there a secret message? What's going on? <laughs> Shinra was a bad, bad guy in FF7. <laughs> Should we be worried about this? <laughs> And Shinra was on the, on the side of the, having the power. <laughs> In the, in, the, in the real world, <laughs> in the world that we live, it's a really good guy. <laughs> and <laughs> and、uh, we'd like to、uh, start、uh, with the grassroots、uh, action. So we wanted to start out with the editor of the resistance. <laughs> Basically, Avalanche was the resistance. We wanted to join the resistance. So we're working with them. <laughs> Good. Well, so we don't have to worry about you guys taking over the world. I don't know what it's going to be.、Um, so, uh, uh, your uh, tenure at、uh, Square Enix, you led the company、uh, over the course of a, a dozen years or so、um, during some of the most interesting and exciting. Times for Japanese game development. Would you tell us a little bit about your vision of how the Japanese game industry has changed over the past 10 years? So the console game started out in Japan. I think that the console game like, rapidly、uh, grew and also、uh, matured. Yes, but the Japanese people are very good at the game. So, the 
Japanese love games, so we started to look for other、uh, ways of playing. So we started out to play the game with the cell phone since the year 2000. And also, network game we started in, in 2005. And the social game became really popular in 2009. So I could say that the,、uh, the variation, or in, in, in these 10 years, we could see much variation、uh, in Japan. So, through this diversification,、uh, it looks like the,、uh, every, uh, all the, the, the criteria of the game it looks similar,、uh, small, but it's the, the, the feature of the Japanese、uh, game market is this、uh, the, uh, di diversity. And,、um, How would you say,、uh, how do you see the relationship or the difference between the Japanese game industry and the American industry or the European industry? Yeah, I mean, I'm just curious about,、um, there's been a lot of discussion about. Uh, Japanese uh, game development uh, leading the way,、uh, establishing a lot of important uh, franchises, uh, creating a lot of the most important and influential games. And then uh, recently, uh, some Japanese designers have been looking at Western games,、uh, Western gameplay styles, and trying to learn from, from those. Shinra as a company is going to be established here、uh, in America. And、um, I'm just wondering about、uh, whether you've looked at the differences in styles between these two industries and whether, that has,、uh, whether you have any thoughts about that. I personally don't think there's much difference between Japan and the Western. So, I think in Japan the diversification、uh, expanded, and in the Western world it was the opposite. So, when you see that the,、uh, when you compare to the、uh, one that Diversified version to the Western,、uh, more concentrated version, it seems um, uh, the Western version seems to be bigger. Since 2005, the,、uh, our technologies,、uh, uh, the Western technology is getting more competitive. We are a little behind, so we start to、uh, get a little behind.
世界で展開するために世界で戦える人たちが一番多くいるのがこのアメリカじゃないかと思ってますあの会社を始めた。Uh, the reason why I established Shinra in USA is that the, we, I wanted to make Shinra to be competitive in the world. And I believe that there is most、uh, competing people in,、uh, in USA. That's why. ですからどちらかというとアメリカのマーケットを狙っていくよりもグローバルに戦ってくれる人たちがいっぱいアメリカにいるんじゃないかなと思ってアメリカに来ました。So、but, but like this, global global the, the approach of cloud gaming seems to be about centralizing. The technology, centralizing the computation.、Uh, the players will be using various front ends, but the game is really located centrally. And you talked a little bit about how, that's, how you think that's going to influence game development. I want to ask do you think that this is going to lead to like a fewer, larger, Bigger, more expansive games,、uh, like giant, you know, $500 million games where there are these enormous shared worlds. Is that the most important、uh, aspect of or influence of cloud gaming? Or will there be opportunities for、uh, lots of smaller scale developments like we see now on the PC?、Uh,
less immersive, uh, less creative, because they always, you feel like as you're playing the game, you're also in the store, and the guy's trying to sell you <laughs> the game <laughs> while you're playing it. Uh, do you ever worry about that? And, and from your perspective, is that something that, that, uh, that, that you think about as a player? So when you were uh, leading uh, Square Enix uh, for, for many years, uh, you were responsible that for creating some of the most beloved and, and uh, influential uh, games and uh, series of games uh, ever in the history of video games. And I, <laughs> and my, and so remember that? So, uh, and so my, my question is, Give us a little insight into the creative process uh, inside Square Enix uh, during your time there. And how did, for example, how did strategic business questions influence the game teams, the game development teams? How did an idea start? Where did it come from and how did it grow and how did it get from you know, out, out into the world. Like, give us a little peek into, into that process. Yeah, so within Square Enix, there were various teams working on games. Where did the, who decided what games uh, were gonna be made next? Where did those ideas come from and how, you know, we're, we're um, you know, how did it how did it go from being a concept to being uh, greenlit as a, as a project, and then and then developed? Where tell us a little bit about was it was it a top down vision where you said here's where the market is going and let's do a title in this uh, direction, or were there teams pitching you with ideas and saying hey we want to do this or we want to go in this direction and developing prototypes and bringing those and. Uh, how did a how did a game go from concept to becoming a full fledged project? Game and MMO. 
talking about the、uh, deciding the portfolio of the operation. And I didn't、uh, direct about which title to use or IP to use. But I'd rather direct it, ask the person and direct it, please make something new next. So, 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 Person、uh, come to him to pitch. So, my job was to create a portfolio and decide who we were going to assign to. So, so a, a, a series like the Final Fantasy series, so important, so influential,、uh, in the, especially here in America, really is synonymous with, with RPGs and with the Japanese style、uh, RPGs. What do you think makes that series in particular so successful? What was the secret ingredient that made Final Fantasy such a flagship?
So you will be developing relationships with publishers and relationships with developers, both. And you'll, yes, I have yeah. First developers. Um, and do you, can you name any names of developers that you're talking to or that you're thinking about? Is it too early? Or can you give us a hint about the, the type of uh, developers you're talking to? encourage people to be developing prototypes that use this cloud gaming technology. Um, presumably, you'll be helping to find funding for those teams by either connecting them with publishers or maybe even yourselves doing a little bit of funding of prototypes. Uh, is, that, uh, is that fair to say? itself uh, going to grow and will you be hiring people over the next uh, year as you get larger? students are looking to create a career in, in games. Um, we have a focus on design, but uh, some of our students are interested in uh, the business side of the game industry. Can you give those students some advice? You, a captain of industry, a titan, uh, someone who could help build the, the, the game industry. What should a young person who's interested in creating a, a career in the industry on the business side, on the executive side, what should they be thinking about? What should they be focusing on as a, as a student and as a young person? Um, first, I, I'm a very good person. <laughs> so, so, not, so not like, I'm not a tyranny kind of person. <laughs>
Developers use the familiar tools that they're already using for game development, C++ and Unity, or will there be some new development environment that's necessary to learn? that you're, uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit more, talking about how 
play by play, uh, shout casting, uh, the kinds of things that you see in esports, um, how that will be enabled by uh, the cloud. Uh, So he focused primarily on the supercomputing aspects in his speech, but as you pointed out, because it's also accessible from any device, effectively what you're describing, baking Twitch into the system, is possible as a result of this, and we're quite interested in moving that direction. Um, uh, yes, in, in the back, yeah. <laughs> so the idea is that all the physics and the rendering happens on the server, and then is streamed to the player's display, correct? It seems like the computer is less of an issue than the network is an issue, getting that many frames per second to someone's display. So is some, do you have some proprietary technology to handle that, or how exactly? It, it, that just seems like a very difficult technical task to solve. So, so this approach makes the network really central to everything that's happening and the speed of the network is really critical to allowing you guys to do what you want to do. Uh, do you have proprietary technology and techniques for, for solving that? So one of the efforts that we focused our technology on is incredibly fast rendering of the game frames. The more quickly that we can render a game frame, the more uh, milliseconds that we can add to the network. So it's an eff it's a location where we place significant efforts. And so, of course, you will always have network problems. Um, and so we're not pretending that just through the technological side we can solve all of the issues there. But we also have a strong belief that networks will get better and that as time passes we'll be able to solve significantly more of these network problems. And so the service can have various grades and levels of interaction. So for example, the ability to play in high resolution with significant interactivity may be limited to people with fiber or equally strong connections. But if you have a mobile device and you simply want to watch or participate in a different fashion, you may be able to do so. Um, yes? Um, um, I was just wondering, uh, as the gap between the PC and other devices or uh, approaches, uh, will there be any mod or user generated generated content that is involved or, or supported or, or is encouraged? So, yeah, so what is the role for user generated content?
around user communities that started really in earnest approximately 10 years ago and began gaining steam about five years ago will actually become far more powerful when it comes to these new systems. Basically, in mob development up until now, and even generating content up until now, you've had to limit your ability to create because you have to share these small pieces. Uh, but we are able to release that by allowing you to develop this content directly onto the network, and so we think that even more interesting things will come as a result. Um, I think we have time for maybe one or two more. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes. One in the corner. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know you were talking about previously about um, hiring in your small company, even though it's only been a month or so. But I was curious how uh, your thoughts on internships and recruiting for interns in the near future. Will Which you be looking for? Will, will you be looking for interns? <laughs> <laughs> and what's your email address? We welcome you. or in the SDK and other developer access points, come speak to me. Come speak to Colin back there, our director of partnerships. Hi, Colin. Or Christina, our director of marketing. Great. And, and maybe that's a good place to end it. Uh, thank you again. It was uh, extremely interesting speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.